Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another one of Get Realism's podcast. I am Adam Chase Rennie. And I am Christine Chen. Episode 20. That's a nice number. I like two number 20. Zero. Is like Ladies and gentlemen. A lot and it seems, com- it sounds complete. You know, 20. You did about 16 weeks. <laughs> um. Well, I th- I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. No, it's yeah, good. Yeah. And it's been amazing. You guys have been amazing. Thank you for following us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for yeah, tagging thanks for along. Yeah, those who ask questions. We really appreciate that. We always get some really cool questions. And and uh, hopefully it's actually useful. Because we, we started this podcast to just talk about films, filmmaking, love of filmmaking, recent films. I just watched Tenet, by the way. And, nice. Um, so just... We want this to be a way for people to ask questions about current issues in the film industry because we all work in the film industry and we encounter a lot of interesting things within the film industry. So, <laughs> to summarize. Yeah. Yes. Um, cool. Well, we're both writing, which is neat. Yeah, we are. We are writing okay. and you're writing. You are um, a writer's block right now. And I yeah. am just starting. It's kind of a fun, fun play. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm starting my other script um, that I had the idea for a while ago. But then I'm bringing it back to life because the recent location that I shot at, John Schneider Studios, I was really inspired by the location. And so now that I have a location in mind, then I can continue to percolate more ideas for the script. I do that quite often. I'll write something, just a little snippet, mm-hmm. and forget about it. And then something will inspire me to pick it up again. And um, How long ago did this idea come up? I wrote the little snippet for the Awesome Film Society grant that I did not get. So that was probably May. Is my thought May or June, or June or July around there? Yeah, and so um, yeah, I made like a lookbook and everything about what I would. So I have a very clear visual and style choice that I really want to do for it. Um, and now mm-hmm. I am going to be working with my. Is it a genre piece buddy. or is it like one specific thing? Say what? Is it like one specific genre or is it like, like, what is it? It's a multiple cross genres. Genre. It's yeah, a cross genre. genre. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, cross genre between thriller, fantasy, and femme fatale. Like, noir. nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love it. I'm excited. I'm so stoked, stoked. So, um, I, I want to be somebody who can cross different genres and do different kinds of movies without people thinking twice. Because, I mean, actors can do that. So why can't, you know, filmmakers? Who, who, who would you say is, does that the most? Because I feel like most directors seem to have their kind of their thing that they do. Mm-hmm. You know, Nolan is um, drama slash action, right? Uh, well, I guess he did Dunkirk, and that was more like historical action. Um, so is your uh, question like who... My, my which, question is like, okay. which director can you think of that like really crosses genres or crosses style? And stuff? Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, really? Yeah, he made Tusk. Have you ever seen that movie? I have not. Okay, Tusk is about a living man who is turned into a walrus. Wow. Listen, it is, it, the idea came from him on a podcast and he had this idea randomly and he was like, I want to make a movie about this because he read like some sort of police report that yeah. basically like showed that in the crime scene that there is a man who is genetically modified to be a walrus and to swim in water and eat and live in as a walrus. And wow. uh, he thought that was just super batshit crazy. He was like, I want to make this. And he was like, 
anybody on Twitter doesn't want me to make this, they'll tell me now. And no one said anything. They're like, Nobody go ahead. No, so he's Nobody said it. no. So he made a walrus movie. Human. When was this? This was back in 2013. No, 2012? It's called Tusk. 20- and it's called Tusk. And he also made another movie called Yoga Hosers, which is about little mini uh, Nazi bratwurst that comes to life and kill people. Interesting. Okay, so cross-genre people who are actually <laughs> make good content. <laughs> Listen, I think it's great. But if you don't think it's good, shit. All right. That's your that loss. Quite bizarre. <laughs> It is, and that's what makes it great, right? <laughs> I guess. He also made but, a cult movie, too. Yeah. Red State. Have you ever make seen a that? cult movie. Yeah. Red State is probably a better example of a Ken, Kevin Smith movie. Says. Yeah, I, I just said Red State, and Christine just completely ignored me. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree, Kelly. Thank you. I haven't seen Red State either. Clearly, I need an education in Kevin Smith movies. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seems like that's my problem, is that I don't watch enough movies. Um, yeah, I haven't well, seen Red State either. Red okay. State's great. It is? Okay. It well, utilizes well. small budget and um, really good, good, amazing dialogue. Mm-hmm. Okay. The other movies I mentioned, they're just silly. They're just silly horror films. But Red State is actually serious in its right of being a a, a cult film established in a Westboro Baptist Church type of vibe. Kidnapping kids and, yeah, all that stuff. Fun. It's a fun movie. It's good. I like it. Yeah. Um, Speaking of horror, I am going to be working on my first horror film. Like, legit horror film. Not like thriller. Yeah. It's a horror film. Yeah. Like a horror scare film. That's rad. I'm pretty excited about it because I don't watch horror films and have no desire to. I don't like horror films. You don't? I don't. I don't. I don't like being scared. I think it's a terrible feeling. You just don't like being Um, scared or you just don't like the gore? Okay. You're right. It's more, maybe more the gore I don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Um, yeah, I just don't find it entertaining. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, however, watching and setting up the gore effects is fun. Yeah, I just don't like watching it, like actually watching it on screen and not knowing how. But it's that's done. the best part is watching it. Watching a gory movie with somebody who doesn't like gory movies. It's yeah, unless like they get like weird like acid reflex vibe going on and they just like hurt you know they can't stand it blood you know even though yeah. it's 100 percent fake they're still just like ugh, ugh, you know yeah <laughs> i i no, think it's it, funny it should be, it should be interesting because when you do uh horror breakdowns it's all about continuity really i mean I'm yeah sure frosty can talk our heads off about that one um mm-hmm. but you know, no makeup, every makeup artist is going to hate you if you do like, hey, he's got a cut. And then we change him to no cut, back to a cut, back to no cut, back to getting punched, you know? So I, I, I particularly need to be good about knowing in the script where things are in terms of uh, pacing. Timeline. Yeah. So, yeah. So th- th- that I'm excited about. Um, they'll be here in Shreveport, so I don't have to travel is great um would this be a feature or short it'll be a feature a feature film nice yep I'm excited um so you're beginning writing it no no i'm ading it you're ading it oh okay yeah this is the project that i'm signed up for in october nice mm-hmm. okay so but i personally am writing a thriller slash horror slash fantasy slash yeah femme fatale noir inspired film yes. yeah let's let's talk about that for a second and then we can talk about the first ad job if you want um sure the the writing i have have you yeah be- so done- usually when i write it's uh it starts off with images you know i have a very clear yeah. image and 
man, for some reason, I had a really clear image of mermaid. Like I've been wanting to do something with a mermaid for a very, very, very long time. I've also been yes. wanting to do something grunge noir uh, with, and I, I had, ju- I've just gotten off of a set. The last three features I was on um, used this particular light called the Titan Tube, and I'm in love with this light. It's, you know what a quasar is, right? The little I do. skinny tube yeah. things. Yeah, okay. they look like lightsabers. So, yeah. The quasar itself has nothing. It like you think the quasar is cool. Like the this Titan tube is like a quasar, but you can have a program attached to it where you can change the intensity levels and the color temperature remotely. Yeah. Wow, it's the that's coolest neat. Thing ever. So you, yeah. you'll see. So on the last set, um, there's Gaffer, uh, Genie, Electric Combo. Mm. Uh, there, um, yeah, Gonzo and Nino. And Nino would be on his little iPad walking around, like doing science things, and like colored the tubes would be changing back and forth and stuff. And and he'd be sitting at his little desk that he. I do up. appreciate your interpretation of science. E. <laughs> <laughs> Lighting, lighting, lighting. <laughs> and, uh, and he'll be at his table testing tubes and the lights will be going off. And uh-huh. he's got a light board and everything. <clears throat> he's like a DJ. So I, my nickname for him was DJ Nino on set because he'd always be at his thing, like lights be on. Like it was this whole like house. It just was really funny. It was, it, he was just, the lights would be He was creating off. a light show. Yeah, like, dude. You know, uh, but I really want to work with neon lights. It, I just think neon is ever since with like Blade Runner and mm. uh, I don't know, things like that. I just, I love the, the visual effects of it. And so I know I want like, like Titan tubes. I know that I want neon. Mm-hmm. I know that I want to do a callback to the old school noir films. So taking, uh, you know, the imagery of the dead man floating in the pool, you know, something yeah. like that. I want to call callback to all of that. Uh, I want to be really stylized with the wardrobe and the art. So, yeah, I'm writing that. Mm-hmm. I have parts of it written, and then I'll finish. I'll start the outline process with my friend tomorrow. So, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So I just have I have specific images in my head. Now it's the fa- Now it's the process of what are the points that we're gonna hit to make those hit. images come to life. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I can't write. It's difficult for me to write something that doesn't have a purpose, like a message to it. Um, Like, I can't just do an entertainment. Oh, yeah. But I feel like a lot of people start that way writing. I don't find the message in my writing until until I begin the process, the journey, if you will. But I have a message in this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to subtly hide those into my fantastical noir film so nice yeah it's gonna be one of women feminine power so very excited i like it fuck yes 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 and you're beginning the outline tomorrow so you're just doing beat sheet stuff um i've already written a short proof of concept for it and then i'm just developing that into a feature so nice Mm -hmm. oh so that'll be a good launching pad for you guys to break off and fill in the gaps wherever wherever need be yeah nice instagram you guys keep waving at me you guys have to ask me questions (laughs) any questions ask away ask away we have a lot of people who are jo- who've joined on and off and are waving and stuff. It's like episode that. twenty, you guys. We got yeah, ha- guys, half of our shit together. <laughs> Anybody who's writing or or um, creating or trying to get on set during COVID, you know, yeah. feel free to ask some questions so that maybe I can maybe something is helpful and, and whatnot. Um, anyway, so yeah, you, that's on my agenda horror film and uh and that would be fun to ad that and then write it write something that's in that line. where is that gonna shoot at so i think oh you mean the one that i'm ading yeah yeah the one it's in treeport remember i told you oh, okay i assume we're moving topics oh not yet sorry i okay to jump around. okay no, so the 
the horror film will be in Shreveport. And then the one I'm writing, I am thinking it would be pretty cool to shoot it at the John Schneider Studios. But yeah. I'm not sure. That's in my, in my mind. Are you thinking of other locations besides Snyder Studios that you want to, where you want to shoot it? Or yeah, is it mostly there? The way I've written it was with the whole 19, I guess 40s, 30s style motel, you know, the kind of the ones with the big signs with the neon sign in the front. Oh, like, like, a, like a Twilight Zone movie. type of, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like originally, how I kind of wrote it was that kind of setup. Uh, but I like the idea of the mermaid in the swamps. Yeah. So, uh, so that's, so we want to figure out how to incorporate some voodoo aspect to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. It's very, Louisiana has been very inspiring for me. The back mm-hmm. of Louisiana, I have realized this. I don't know why. I think maybe I'm fascinated by it because it's just, I, I don't know. I've just been in Texas for so long and all of Louisiana's little quirks uh, yeah. seem to end up making it into my film. Oh, we do have a question. How many pages typically for a feature? Half hour, full hour. Uh, it's The general rule is one page is one minute. So you're looking at around 90 pages is probably your typical for a feature. And that will run you about an hour and a half. So that's, that's what you're aiming for. Uh, oftentimes, I find that it, you knowing how you write really affects the pacing of stuff. So I, in the beginning, my count was more, I needed less pages because I tended to like to spend more time on the action than how it's actually written. So, and 85 page script often would translate to more like 95 minutes type thing. Um, as I've gotten better at writing and understanding my, my writing style and skill set, it's getting closer and closer to that one minute equation to one page. Um, right. Yeah. So I, I, I think not doing exactly 90 gives you the option to cut things too. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, I think it's always better. It, it, it's a catch-22, right? You write more, then you spend more money shooting things. That well, because I was going to ask, what if, if it's a sequence? Like, what is a tightly, tightly written sequence, like an action sequence that have, like, spans into, like, two pages or maybe even longer? That could, yeah. still, that could still be a minute and a half, totally. depending on yeah. how the action is, you know? Yeah, and how it's cut. And, and yeah. Like, totally. But yeah, I think you're right. I think it, it depends on how <clears throat> the pacing of your writing translates to what is to actually going to be on screen. Or how it's being directed and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Mine is so hand in hand because I write and then I direct it. So yeah. uh, a lot of it, it's highly personal for me. So um, I can pretty much gauge like, oh, I wrote it here. It's probably going to be about this, this many minutes or, or whatnot. When you say personal, you mean based off of your experiences? Uh, based off of the way I direct and the way I write, I can, okay. I know how I edit as well. So yeah. I can very accurately estimate how long something is probably going to be. Gotcha. That's my thing. Uh-huh. Um, it, I mean, it's going to vary. So it's easier to visualize what you're, what you're doing. Yeah. 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 So, um, cause I'll, I'll always, I, that's why I don't remember. I said I'm not a writer because I write for myself to direct. Yeah, uh, but I don't necessarily. I mean, I agree with that statement, but I I don't know. I feel conflicted with that statement because I I do feel like you are a writer in the respect of that you 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 have something you want to you know put on the screen and yeah. you made it yourself. That's like how stand-up comedy is. Stand-up comedy isn't written by, you know, 17 different people. Dave Chappelle sure. only writes his own jokes. Yeah. Okay. That's so fair. that's, he's still a writer in that respect. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So you, okay. you are, to me, a writer and a director. Um, more importantly, a filmmaker, but you're, you're a writer and director. I mean, that's, yeah. that, that goes with, 
yeah, that goes. I, I'm I'm walking the path of Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan is my absolutely hundred percent like my idol right now. I and pretty soon you're just gonna start crashing planes. <laughs> oh my gosh! I know. <laughs> Well, I was watching it. Uh, I was tenant. Don't spoil anything. If you do, your friendship and I, I will, going will to, be but done. Like, I just want to imagine that conversation. I think we mentioned this in the last podcast, but it's just like, did he just show a test sample to someone? And somebody just said, hey, why don't you, why don't you crash a real plane? Here's my plane. Just crash it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Right? I feel like that's how the conversation went. It, it definitely yeah. went that way. And totally. I mean, because that's fact, what happened to me for my, for my short. Why did you burn down an RV? Yeah. I don't have one. Oh, well I do just burn it down. Okay. Just burn it down. <laughs> cool. But I feel like that goes with experience though. Right. I mean, no one like he wouldn't give it to an amateur filmmaker. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like I, he I wouldn't had this like conversation with somebody yesterday Yeah. Uh, who was uh, say asking me, you know, how do I get into, production and how do I get into producing other people's stuff and, and producing when hard. does it, when does it happen where, you know, you, people start giving you money and to do stuff. Yeah. And I was like, this is, it's, there's no end. That's how, what it is. It's a continuous growth and it's a continuous build on your reputation and on your repertoire. And as you, you build more, more people will want to join in and more people will will feel will trust you to make stuff and want to give you the resources so it, there's no end you know so there's no like oh by year three you know you're going to start getting money from investors no like if, if, in the best case scenario you could get it in year one you know depending on what your resources are but it is definitely a growth period and i was explaining that like when i first started I had to beg people to help me out with my movies. Like, just, hey, please, like, please come and just be in the film, you know? And then now it's a lot different. Now, whenever I mention, when I don't have a project, people are asking, like, what, what can I help with? Like, what can I be in type thing? Right. So yeah. It's cool. So my uh, suggestion for that is to just finish everything. If you finish things in a in any form of way with some sort of uh, quality, people will ask you to do more stuff. Mm -hmm. Just finish it, and then that goes and along that's with the end of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, and and we're done. See you next week, guys. And no. we're done. Words of wisdom. We're done. Would you would you would you agree though that? it does have an equal amount of passion too with it. So like if, if you if you're not invested in the project that you are writing or directing that hinders a lot. Oh yeah. I don't see how people can do projects that they're not actually remotely passionate or interested in because you're like, you're stuck with that project for a very long time. Yeah. You know, and if you're not interested in it, you're just not going to work on it. Right. So I don't see the point of doing something that you're not actually passionate about and care about. Mm -hmm. It will affect the quality of the work. And also you just won't be able to finish it in a timely manner. So yeah, no, it totally, it totally affects it. It affects the way you talk to people about it and therefore give them the vibe as to whether they want to support you or not, you know? It affects your time that you want to spend, and and if it doesn't, if you're not passionate about it, everybody else can feel it, and everybody else is going to not devote the kind of passion that they should, because they are like, oh, you don't care, so why should I care? Right. And then your product is going to end up being a why should I care product, right? So. And why should you, if, if they're not uh, going to be passionate about it, there's no reason to be invested into it. That's why I'm very confused with people who are like, yeah, you know, these producers are like, yeah, I just want to make back my money. I just want to make back my money. I just want to make back my money. And I had a conversation with, with uh, some, uh, a friend of mine about this. And he was like, it, it doesn't matter 
where your loyalty lies. If it lies within a project or it lies within anyone, if you believe in it and you're passionate with them, the sky's the limit. Yeah. It really is. Now, that being said, it's not like money can just, you know, come from nowhere. That's, cool. that's not how it works. But you also understand that if there's an equal amount of uh, energy in time mm-hmm. that is carried with that passion, it, I think it can work. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, it's not like a formula. It's not like A plus B equals C, but it's, no. it's, um, it's, a, it's a way to learn. Gauge. It's a proportion thing, I think. Learn, it's a, it's yeah. Like, and yeah. and how you, to gauge you, everything. Yeah. I, we have another question. So I was gonna, it's, uh, question was from Kyle. If you're doing something historical, how comfortable are you with artistic license? That's a inter- very interesting question. So I don't like rewriting history, mm. you know, especially if it's going to put certain people in a more positive or, or a more negative light. I, I think that's kind of wrong to do that. Now, if you're inspired by a historical event and you write something that is not about a specific real person, but is inspired by something, then that might be different. Does that make sense? So, 100%. I, so I have an example. Um, I'm doing two scripts, actually. One that is extremely historically accurate and one that isn't. And the one that's historically accurate is because it's about a real specific person and I, it's history and I don't want to inject my beliefs into it. I just want to tell the real story of that historical person. Now my other script that has some historical value in it is just inspired by the events surrounding that history. But Mm -hmm. the person is completely made up, although it's very suspiciously similar to someone it's based off of. But I definitely don't use the likeness. I don't mention that person's name. It doesn't take family members. It doesn't, you know, it's it's a made up person, just highly inspired by true events. So when that's the case artistic license away you know that's Mm -hmm. that's my opinion yeah um and that's how i kind of treat historical content i don't i don't know if it's boundless if it's still respectable within its history yes so i have have you had that issue adam with Uh, what i don't know if you've written anything that's of fiction of non-fictional base or um i if i i i didn't i did twist up like history like like in short stories never mm-hmm. in never in a way of like you know uh writing a, a, a specific piece and actually making it come to life via you know yeah. movie filmmaking any of that yeah. but um i've definitely written a couple of short stories that i've i've been since then it, it feels a little tone deaf now mm-hmm. um and, and i don't mind talking about it with you off air but um yeah it, it but it it served a purpose for me to learn and understand who i was as a writer then and sure. how much i've grown now and you know the things that i were writing back then was just things that were just going on in my head and things that yeah. were interesting to me um then that's all i knew and i still write that way but i also am aware cognizant of the fact that you know the, the I, I want to make the work that i'm trying to make as commercially viable as i possibly can sure. without deterring anybody or f- yeah. making them yeah, feel yeah. marginalized does that, that make sense that's a great question uh, because there have been multiple incidences where hollywood takes much liberty with historic Ish, uh, historic events and writing it in the favor of um, whoever they think their audience is going to be. And our most recent example is Mulan. And as I've at least read about it, I have not yet to watch the film, but I haven't uh, seen it, it either. Definitely alienated 
a lot of audiences because it's they're basically making crap up. You know, Wait, Christine, does it surprise you though? No. Yeah. <laughs> Because Disney's been doing that for 50 plus years. I know, but this is like very specific though. This is, it is this, yes, you're historically, right. You're right. They wrote it about a whole clan of people that are like, and completely didn't pay attention to what it was about, which is a specific indigenous, you know, community. Yeah. It just kind of was like, Hey, this is, we're going to appeal to the Chinese. And that's it. <laughs> you know, whatever. So this is where it is difficult to write things that are history based and that people should do their due diligence and do research. Research is important. And yeah. I can tell you anytime I do any topic that I don't know anything about, like you, I have to research and I'm very adamant about that research and you can see it. And it comes clearly in a film that has done their research and one that has not. It, it may not ever come up in the script itself in terms of like in dialogue or in the plot. But if history isn't, if research isn't paid attention to, what happens is you'll have a lot of conflicting things that happen, you know? people will say things that don't quite make sense because they wouldn't have because they this historical context would have made them not say that or you know so i just think that research is is important it's invaluable and it's a great way to learn um and that that's my documentary background speaking i think i'm just fascinated by all that because uh because I have a documentary background. I was going to ask, that. since you have that documentary background, it definitely influenced a lot in terms of writing, just so how thorough you are from A yeah. to Z, and you understand exactly how the script is going, and you have every frame in your head already. You know, whether, yeah. whether or not you I, did the research or you did the time, you do your absolute best to be respectful to the story. Yes, I do my absolute best to be respectful of the story. And, that, and I think that's that the great thing now is, you know, social media can be annoying and over the yeah. web and all that stuff. And, but the thing is, what, I, what has been positive of it is there is accountability now. Immediate accountability. And so it's yeah. a lot more difficult to put something out that is, that somebody won't come and point out the imminent problems of it, you know, historically. Nothing's going to slip under the radar. Or, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so just always do your research. Yeah, do your research. And, I don't, don't, and doing your research also doesn't mean do your research in a particular way of belief either. Doing your research means understanding all perspectives, you know. It's okay to have a vision and a way of belief but I think it's, if you don't research all sorts of beliefs, then your writing is going to be very one-dimensional and skewed. So I, I really try to not, I really try to not do that. You know, yeah. I, I have strong opinions for sure, but uh, I never want to be what we call what, on the nose, on the uh -huh. nose or preachy, preachy. I don't want to be preachy either. Yeah. So I hate that note whenever I get, if I ever get it, like from a friend being like, this is kind of preachy. You're on the nose. I'm like, shit. <laughs> shit, my <laughs> what bad. What can I do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because to make something shoved in so obvious, it definitely takes away the magic of it. Yes. You know, especially where the scene or where the story is going to, unless it's a reversal. If it's like a reveal yeah. and a reversal, that's different. That's fun. But um, yeah, I, yeah, to to fall into a trope doesn't necessarily have to be bad, but yeah. um, it, it it could it could definitely hinder the creative work if not enough research is put upon. Yeah. It. You know what I mean? And that goes for that goes yeah. for anything really. I mean, even for horror films, people are going into a horror film um, drought because mm -hmm. people are like 
I'm going back and watching old horror films. Like I'm going back and I watch The Exorcist, Rosemary's Baby, uh, all those crazy ass fucking movies. And I'm just like, oh yeah, that's why they're crazy. That's why they're fucking bat shit nuts. And I love it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, the, the research comes in hand with perspective. Yes. And I think we That's see that eloquently said. Yes, the research comes in hand with the perspective. I agree. I think I I think perspective is the the trump card of all. Mm -hmm. You know, you you have to admit if you don't have enough perspective on a certain idea or even if you're a story because you're a storyteller, you know, if you don't have those different perspectives that could really, I don't know, that could, um, that could shrink your world, right? Like that yeah. could feel like you, you don't know anything. <laughs> right, right. It just makes you seem ignorant, really. Yes, what, that's what the word, ignorant, say, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, no, I, so I, I truly believe in research and perspectives. So, and kind of circle Plural. back around because I was mentioning Tenet. Tenet, you can tell even though these are made up worlds that Christopher Nolan has, they're very based on science. And Christopher Nolan has a strong sense and strong interest in science and theory and stuff. You know, you look at interstellar, the black hole and fourth dimension. Memento. And, um, a bunch of other else. Memento exactly. And, and um, what I admire about his work is he's telling extremely com complex concepts in a way that's simple not simple but more easier digestible more easier to understand is that grammatically correct <laughs> yeah i just said digestible okay more digestible correct yeah but i must say and this is not a spoiler alert tenant was hard for me to understand but <laughs> It's just the concept of it is just what was it very, any different very, when you left the movie theater after watching Inception? <laughs> no, Inception I got. It, it, really? Inception, oh I man, then I'm totally fucked understood. with Tenet because I walked I away. Thought Inception. Inception was like boom, like I got it. I love the way it was presented, and I really connected with it. And yeah. I think what made Inception a lot easier to digest is because first and foremost, the story is about a man and, a, and his love for his wife and his inability to let go of the memory of her. Right. Okay, good. Kelly said that Tenet was difficult to follow. Yes, it was. It was very difficult. I kept mm -hmm. being like, wait, what? I just saw that. Wait, did that? Wait, I thought I saw it. When did I see that? Yeah. So I was, I think with Tenet, there wasn't that strong of a emotional connection to, to any particular character. I know he was trying to make it be this one particular character, which is this mom and uh, da son duo. Hang on, are you talking about Tenet right now? Yeah. I haven't seen it. I know, I'm not. I'm not oh, I'm not okay, sure. okay. You're not going to understand anything anyway. Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen. I'm going to watch it at home, really and I'm going to watch it. it. I don't know. <laughs> no, but listen though, like you you watch Inception more than once, yeah? Yeah, I did watch it more than once, but so I totally that's, got Inception immediately. But that's but I'm talking about I'm talking about myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> and when I watched Inception, the first time I watched it, I I didn't get it. But the second time I watched it, it hit me so hard like a fucking ton of bricks and I was like, yeah. "Oh, this is the best movie ever. This is probably the most genius fucking movie I've ever seen." Just the same thing with Memento. Like when I saw Memento, Memento 15, yeah. 15 years ago, first time I saw yeah. it, I got it. But the second time I seen it, my, my love for it, uh, my love for it b became stronger with yeah. Memento. I'm surprised. Bruce's tenant isn't on the West Coast. That's strange. You would think that they were released there first. It's, California always gets movies first. Not necessarily. I, I Have you seen California think, right now, Christine? Oh yeah, it's on well, fucking fire. Like Blade Runner right now. <laughs> it's Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah, 
My hometown the, is the, on the fire photo, right it's now. It's very sad, but the photo it is, is quite beautiful. It is. It's terrifying. Um, kudos to Roger Deakins for really imagining exactly what's going on right now. A post-apocalyptic now. nightmare? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, but yeah, no, that's what's happening in California is very, very sad. Um, so, but yeah, no, Tenet is, was very difficult for me to follow. I and think after that, three times of watching it, I'm going to watch it at home probably a dozen times. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I will probably good, understand it, and I'm going to text you in the middle of the night, California. freaking out. Yeah, lots of smoke. Yeah, sorry, Bruce. Stay safe, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce is in L.A. right now. He says that everything's closed because oh, man, so much smoke. So Stay safe, my man. Everybody, all my friends in L.A., everybody stay safe. So, yes, it is very unfortunate what is going on over there. Um, but, yeah, no, Tenet was very, very, very difficult for me to understand, and I will definitely have to rewatch it again, but from a cinematic perspective, it was very... Very Nolan, very cinematic, very big scale, and very fun to watch. But uh, I definitely was like, huh, when I got, got out of the theater. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I definitely missed a lot of stuff. So, Yeah, that's, um, why, that's why I think, I don't know, like I really wanted to go to a theater and watch it, but I, I don't okay, know. Okay, so this brings me to my other conclusion, now that you've said that. Mm. I can't wait for the day when I've made such great films that people will be like, F COVID, F dying, I'm going to go to the movie theater to watch this movie. I know. That's how I felt. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, That's I pretty was, good, too. This is the first film that I watched since quarantine. Uh, I'm, since I'm terrified. You, 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 God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, this is, if, if for anything, it would be for a Nolan film. Like, I don't know for anybody else, but definitely Nolan's film. Yes, I would brave COVID to go watch Nolan's film. And I hope one day somebody will say that about my films too. Like, oh, I will brave the pandemic to watch a Christine Chen film. (laughs) That's hashtag goals. Future goals. That's my hashtag future goals. Oh, I, I I don't see why that wouldn't happen. I'm sure that will. I'm sure that will for sure. All right. For you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, so I'm excited. I like those two questions. Those are great questions. Uh, Bruce, do you have a question? You should ask a question, Bruce. Uh, but yeah, now Kyle, I really liked Kyle's two questions, which is the how comfortable are you with artistic license on historical things? Yeah. Um, yeah, Bruce, ask a question. Stop just emojis. Ask me a question. <laughs> yeah, everybody out there, ask questions. Anyways, what do you want? Uh, what else is is new in your life? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruce said Nolan, Tarantino, and Chen. Thank you. Yes. <sighs> yes. That, is, that hopefully I do love Tarantino too. Um, I think I just like Tarantino's style. So unique. What are you laughing about? <laughs> Because you were just, this was, this was you the last five minutes. You're just like, so yeah, anyways, um, I, I'm really excited for Tenet. Those are really good questions. Um, I need more people to ask questions. <sighs> Can somebody ask more questions? All I see is emojis. <laughs> Adam, do you have anything? <laughs> <laughs> I'm you were just a bundle of nerves and you were just, you were I'm talking sorry. the entire time. And I'm like, I'm going to let you just go off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Like you're pulling an Adam right now, and I'm like, fucking yes. Ever. No, I'm not saying that. I'm you're just popping off. You're just going. I'm I'm letting <laughs> I'm letting you loose. It's my matcha t- matcha caffeine talking right now. No, yeah, I, I love it. I, you're the only human being I talk to, like other than my my mother <laughs> and a couple of my friends. That's it. So I look forward to all this, especially you popping off. Little podcast chat. But That's I wanted to. You- that's actually why we're doing these podcasts is because we're lonely and sad and this gives us a reason to talk to each other yeah um (laughs) can i can we can we talk about uh did we get any other questions by the way because i want to talk about something i'm checking i'm checking the facebook page and see if there's any other questions bruce made a comment he didn't make it he didn't ask a question uh but i agree uh nolan tarantino stop giving me emojis wait are you more tarantino or nolan style okay that's a great question uh, that's hard because it depends on how I feel. 
Okay, I would say majority majority of the time I'm more of a Nolan style, but smart there are and articulate films that I like to go Tarantino style. Um, but I love Nolan all the way. I love how well he makes very complicated concepts very digestible in a very unique way, and his stories are highly individualized and unique. And yet he can make an appeal to a mass commercial audience, but still stay true to himself and to his original concepts. So they're like, you know, when it's a ter- a Nolan film, you know, it, I guess same goes with Tarantino as well. Um, I love the way Tarantino writes often. Um, but I think I'm, I don't know. This, I like his style. I love that he has this unique way of making violence beautiful. Um, yeah, I agree. But let's see. You know, I'm a simple producer, Mar Tarantino, raw and open. Cool, cool. He's your Mar Tarantino, yeah. I just, I love cinematic, cinema, cinematic value. I think I had this conversation with, I think, I think it was with my brother. I'm trying to figure out how I had this conversation. It was about if, if Christopher Nolan would be able to focus a little bit more on character development, characterization versus plot, plot, purely plot driven content, I think he would be the best director ever. Because the, A Dark Knight was definitely, A Dark Knight, both the first one and the second one, were both stronger in character development. You know, and plot. And, and plot. And I think because of that, like, I really, really, it, Memento was one of those two, very character driven. He's, his last two films, including Tenant, have been more plot driven so dunkirk was very 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 much plot i mean that whole thing was just his story history you know pits several lines of history and how everybody was uh, affected by it uh yes adam says he has a picture of me putting my hand in nolan's handprints this is true do you think inception was easier to understand because dreams have this loose no boundaries concept versus Tenet, which is more science boundary specific concept? I think so. I think definitely. I think with, well, I think ultimately when it comes down to Inception, it's just three layers. It's just three layers of they went into one dream that intercepted another dream that went to another dream. So it's just this concept of being able to float between dreams and then um, that time goes through these dreams in different ways and, and whatnot. I think, yes, I think Tenet had a lot of like how time can go backwards and how certain things can go backwards, but, but that you can manifest. It was just like, yeah, I think short answer. Yes. I think you're right. I think that's what it is. It's just, it's easier to conceptualize dreams than to, I think that's also why I didn't Interstellar was so difficult was not nearly as interesting or easy for me to follow as well. It's so rooted in science, and I I personally don't know much about the black hole or about the fourth dimension. But I know people who loved that film because they knew a lot about the black hole and about the fourth dimension. Alex Walker was is the person I'm referring to. Um, so yeah, this one was just conceptually i just think i need a i think the dialogue in this was so important and i i was so busy trying to understand the previous dialogue and then there were like five dialogues later and i'm pretty sure i missed like a lot of pertinent information <laughs> in between that so mm-hmm. i wonder if i were to find the script and read it whether that would help me a lot you know just yeah. to sit and read the the concepts and like oh, at a normal pace, like slow, slow pace. Understand like what these scientific concepts are. Yeah, for sure. Um. Yeah. Yeah. If it, if people haven't figured it out, I'm a big, huge fan girl of Christopher Nolan. <laughs> I, I'm a fan girl of Christopher Nolan. Shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, 100%. Faith love. This is our faith love. This yeah. Is our faith love. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. So. Yeah, I liked his magic movie too, The Illusionist. You remember that one? So what? You remember The Illusionist? You mean The Prestige? Oh, yeah, Prestige. Duh. Yes. Yeah. The Prestige was a great film. With um a great film. That had good characterization. That had good. Christian Bale too, right? Yes. And okay. That had great 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 character development. So That's an example of good character. If Christopher and Nolan plot. happens to be watching this, my advice to Christopher Nolan is to... You're going to give him <laughs> advice? Get back into character development. Um, I think the, your strongest films are the ones with strong character development. So, um, We got a Hey Guys from Terry Jason Scott Morgan. Stephen Hawking's writings on black hole theory helps, under, helps to make uh, interstellar a lot more easier to understand that's what what the theories are based off of cool i will read into that thanks terry so yeah. we've done an hour by the way we have oh my goodness look at us mm -hmm. we've answered some questions we've said hi to some people we've had a debate about christopher nolan and what films a debate have. what did i debate about well we kind of talked about like characterization versus plot Right. Oh, yeah. But I wasn't in. Oh, I see what it you're saying. It, it, it was, was discussion. just a conversation. Semantics. Yeah. Discussion. It was a discussion. discussion for sure. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, cool. All right. Well, if people don't have any more questions, then I guess that's then, that. Then I guess yeah. we take this bad boy for I a guess landing. We take this and we finish it. I, hey, I really appreciate those of those people who have been able to participate and ask questions and, and whatnot we love you we love you it's you guys that make it interesting or it's just adam and i chatting our heads off about film <laughs> christine you don't need to worry about me you know i can i can carry this <laughs> you know that you don't need to tell me twice <laughs> so yeah so now that i'm going to be in a more stable place hopefully we will continue to do more podcasts and we'd like to invite some let's more underline people. highlight and quote uh hopefully hopefully sorry i just saw that you went live oh bye bye jason no worries no worries it will we'll have so all of our podcasts the ones that we live stream on instagram and facebook these are our live recordings uh we end up we always put out every single recording we do on our uh, podcast channel. So we are on iTunes, we're on Spotify, pretty much all podcast streaming channels. So podcasts that we've been doing, in addition to the audio version, this is all video recorded as well. And so on YouTube, if you get go on to our Get Realisms channel, you'll be able to find all of our old recordings. And sometimes, in my opinion, I find that the video recordings are a lot more entertaining because especially when there's random pop-up guests and stuff here and there, it's fun to see what's going on. So especially the last few episodes we've been filming where I was on set, those were highly entertaining because we were the locations kept changing and there was thunderstorms and power outages and loud noises random guests loud noises animals dogs so yeah <laughs> definitely all right do your thing all right guys well that has been uh, get realism wait, i forgot i need to turn this puppy up okay go ahead sorry but the audio was coming through my instagram and my instagram uh stopped so then i forgot that i couldn't hear anything so yes now do your thing <laughs> I'm useless. <laughs> All right, I always look like me. I what? Hang on, hang on. I'm the one who looks like the idiot here on the podcast. You don't. <laughs> you look amazing. You're the talent of this pod. I'm just the fuddy duddy here. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I'm just nobody. I'm just here. Oh, whatever. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god, Christine, you're wild. Anyways, <laughs> guys, we are this is oh man, this has been the Get Real Since podcast. I'm Adam Chase Rennie. And oh, I'm Christine Chen. Good God, you guys. Good God. Twenty twenty weeks later and uh and twenty and, in twenty twenty during pandemic. Uh, during the pandy. And listen, we're gonna we're gonna continue doing our thing. We're still gonna we're still we're still gonna go live. We're still gonna have our recordings. Get realisms.com, get your book today, get the poster right behind Christine today. Do it. Do it. Do it, do it. Okay guys, goodbye.